What's going on guys, it's Jake, we're back in for another YouTube video and as you can see, we have the turbo on the car. So this is the big reveal. We are gonna be running a 6466 with a 1.05 exhaust housing. It's a precision and hopefully it will do everything that we want it to do and push upwards of 700 wheel horsepower. I'm pretty sure it will. I was talking to the tuner and he told me possibly consider a 6870 and I decided not to because he said that turbo was a little more radical and I really kind of just wanted to be a street car and have fun with the car so I decided not to go bigger although most of everything that's on the car can support more power maybe we can think about that down the road but yeah let me get off this uh, tripod and I'll show you guys a better look at the turbo so here it is and here's how it's sitting and as you guys can see I do have my wastegate mounted as well and we'll get a better look at where the dump tube is from the bottom when we get under the car to hook up the rear downpipe to midpipe connection and yeah so here we go i got everything kind of just mocked up as you guys can see this whole works will rotate kind of and get you can get it in a better position and you can also rotate the housing of the front of the turbo so you can find the best positioning for everything to work but first thing I got to do here is go ahead and get the second downpipe connection on because that way we'll know how much room we can really work with because you got to remember when I'm moving this top piece, it's moving the whole entire downpipe down in that hole. So I can't have any of this stuff in a bind and I know that this is going to be the proper positioning for the turbo and we're going to have to have a 90 degree vibrant flange here welded onto the end of the turbo and then have our pipe coming down here and have our intake tube, you know, chilling somewhere around here. But I'm really happy to have all the exhaust parts in and be able to show you guys all this cool stuff on the channel. Also, we have a nice little turbo blanket from Torque Solutions. Haven't yet put that on because I do believe this thing is gonna have to come back off before we're finished making the intercooler piping because some of those bolts down there are kind of hard to get to whenever we wanna weld something on the front of this flange. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get under the car. We gotta put this piece in right here, which connects to the downpipe and finishes the rest of the downpipe connection to the midpipe. And then we'll show you guys our external wastegate connection down there. And yeah, fill you guys in, so stay tuned. So I'm thinking the easiest way to put this up is going to be bolt the midpipe connection in, and then I'll be able to fit up the V-band on the front and bolting the rear and holding that will make it a lot easier than trying to hold the whole pipe and put the V-band on all at once. So I'll go ahead and get that on here and then I'll catch up with you guys after. So stay tuned. All right guys, so we got the downpipe secondary section on. I just kind of have it sitting here loose and now we can go up to the top and figure out the best placement for our front housing of the turbo and also make sure there's not any type of bind in the system. This went on there pretty well. I uh, had to kind of tweak one of the pipes, but that's normal because none of the stuff is tight. So before we head back up to the top, I want to get you guys a look at the wastegate. So let's look at that right now. So taking a look here, you guys can tell there is our wastegate up there and we are pretty close to our CV boot right here, which is normal. And also on the other side here to our control arm. So that's also normal, but this is how it should look. And it's gonna take a good bit of effort to get this thing in here with those brand new clamps. If the clamps are a little worn out, then you will be able to put it on a little bit easier. But in my case, it did fight me a little bit. So just keep in mind, you'll have to work on that a little bit. But now we can go back up to the top, check out our turbo, and uh, yeah, let's get it. So if you remember, before we put the downpipe all the way on, we had a good bit of wiggle in all this stuff. And we still do have a little tiny bit of movement here, which is fine, but now it has limited us pretty much to this is our final positioning that we can make the turbo work at, because obviously we can't turn it really one way or the other without binding up the whole exhaust system. So. This is gonna work. It's just a little close to the fuel line here, which that's not really a problem. We can always shorten up the little flange here before we weld on the 90. We can cut some of this off and still be able to weld right here to that. 
So that's probably what's gonna have to happen because we're gonna have a little bit of a tight clearance here with our 90 and we don't wanna have any issues. So probably cut some of this flange off so that way all of our intercooler piping won't be in a bind and it'll all be tight and right. One thing to mention about this turbo with the bigger exhaust housing is it hasn't been out for too terribly long. So this is actually a 6466 that has a little more potential than your standard 6466 with a smaller exhaust housing. So that is one thing that's very good about this one. I know a lot of builds have the 6466 on them, but not too many I've seen have the bigger AR exhaust housing. So that's gonna be really, really neat to see how this thing performs compared to other 6466s on Subarus that you know don't have the bigger exhaust housing. Also, another thing to mention is that this turbo is air-cooled instead of the traditional Subaru's coolant-cooled turbos. So traditionally, when you buy a turbo that is a stock location turbo, or if your car is just brand new, it will have an expansion tank sitting somewhere around here, and it will have coolant flowing through the turbo at all times to, to get the turbo cooled down. So what we have done, I've showed you guys in previous videos, but we basically have bypassed the water pump hose coming right out the water pump that goes normally to the expansion tank that's down in there and it goes under the manifold and it goes down to the return where it would typically come after it went through the stock turbo so that's how that is set up and that's how I've seen everybody set it up so that is the best way I'm assuming and also we have our oil return I have not yet put the AN fitting on and hooked up to the bottom of the turbo but we will be doing that soon so that way we can wrap all these lines up but yeah overall very very happy with this stuff and super excited to have the turbo on the car it was a long waiting game to get this far but you know everything good takes time so if you guys like the video be sure to drop a like hit that subscribe button we'll be back again for another video soon so peace